Hey there! Is today your first time here? Or maybe your first time in a while? If so, maybe you're wondering exactly who we are and what this church is all about. Well, we'd like you to know that we're a group of ordinary people who are on an amazing journey together, following Christ. Our guide is the Bible because it's the divinely inspired Word of God and it will never take us in the wrong direction. Along the way, we hope you'll see that we are welcoming and spiritually passionate and that getting to know you is a big deal to us. We know that the road is rough sometimes, but we'll work really hard to bring you practical and relevant messages to equip and encourage you through life's ups and downs. We want you to know that we care about this community, and we believe that it's our job to make it a better place. So, no matter who you are or where you've been, we're glad you're here with us today. And we hope that you'll join us on our journey, following Christ and living out His plan for us. So, welcome to church. My microphone's really hot. Go ahead. Huh? Go ahead. I'm certain. Hey, Tony, can you turn this? I don't know if it's like the the gain or what. That's kind of hot. Check, check, one, two. One, two, one, two, one, two. Check, one, two. Is that good? Yeah? All right, good. All right, I guess we're starting. <laughs> Big crowd. Glad y'all got here early. Praise the Lord. Uh, well, I guess we're going to get started. Uh, if we can, let's stand up. Um, let's pray, and we'll pray and ask God to have his way this morning. Amen. All right. Lord, we thank you, God, today. God, I pray, God, that you would just minister, God. God, you know our needs. God, you know what we need to hear. God, you know what God, our heart needs. God, I pray that you would just minister. God, I pray that you would anoint the singing, God. The, the minister, God, that preaches the word. Lord, I pray that you would touch us today, God. Minister to us, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise your name, Lord. Thank you. Jesus, amen. Amen. Now let's get ready to worship. We're going to do some hymnals this morning. Amen. Amen.
gospel ship. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. How many is ready to take a trip? Hello, chick. Get out of this old place. But you know, there's still a lot of souls out there that needs to be saved and and uh, rescued. So God knows, God Hello, knows what He's doing. So we just got to work for Him till He till He comes. take up offering you guys probably know what we do you know we have the cash out we have uh, uh you can mail it you can do whatever you need to do uh make sure it's good for y'all <laughs> we have an offering plate in the back where we do it that way also if y'all feel like doing it that way um but we'll go ahead and we'll pray it blessing over it amen lord i praise you god i ask you to bless lord, this offering god. lord bless those who give father uh Lord, we enter into that promise when you bless us, Lord Jesus, when we give to you, God. Lord, you're the provider. You're the giver of all things, God. We bless you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Father. All right. Well, the windows of heaven, they're open. Let's see. she's coming I would like to say that let's still remember today in our well every day but let's still remember the four family uh, brother Dwayne and sister Christy and all the family um, you know we just uh, put sister Linda to rest the other day and and you know and that's was very unexpected and and it, it's hard and it, it's very hard and then sister Priscilla um, messaged me this morning and asked us to pray for her family they have lost a loved one unexpectedly and not sure why 
or what the situation was, but they just really need our prayers too. So let's remember them throughout today.
And my heart becomes free And my shame is undone Your presence, Lord Holy Spirit, you are welcome here Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for To be overcome by your presence Lord, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here
atmosphere is silent For you wear the victor's crown Let your glory fill this temple Let your power overflow By your grace I live and breathe to worship you Hallelujah. Isn't God good this morning? Amen. Let's give the Lord one more hand clap of praise today. Amen. Amen. Thank you all. Thank you all. I want to give honor this morning to your pastors. Don't you have wonderful pastors? If you, if you love your pastors this morning, give them a hand clap of appreciation. Would you do so in the house this morning? Amen. I want to... Um, to thank you uh, for the opportunity to share the word this morning, and uh, I uh, just want to uh, uh, give God glory and honor for His blood, for His grace, and for His mercy. I'm thankful for salvation this morning, and um, I know that um, there are a lot of folks that are uh, concerned during the times that we're living in, and uh, lots of... Um, uh, people worried about uh, this coronavirus and, and so much uncertainty in the times uh, that we're in, but God is still on the throne, amen, and he's still in control, and amen. The Bible says that he'll never leave us, never forsake us, amen, he's still God, amen. And so uh, let's turn this morning the book of John, chapter number 3. I want to talk this morning about life-changing moments. Life-changing moments. There's times in your life that you will encounter things that will change your life, sometimes for the good, sometimes for the bad, uh, whether it be... Uh, uh, some kind of a bad report or a good report, whether for a young person when they graduate high school or graduate college or 
they get a new job. Sometimes it's uh, for everyone that's ever been married. Sometimes that's one of the best days of your life when you have your first child. Amen. It's a defining moment in your life. Amen. When you get saved, ought to be the most important day of your life. Ought to be a day that you'll forever remember and be grateful for. Amen. The the night you got the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Ought to be a, a night that you forever remember. I can remember the night I got the Holy Spirit, amen, baptism, and uh, amen, just fell out under the power of the Holy Spirit, and by the time I hit the floor, amen, speaking in tongues, it didn't sound very uh, uh, very Pentecostal, it sounded kind of weird to me, but uh, amen, over time, God loosened my tongue up, and it was... Uh, uh, sounded a little more uh, like everybody else was was doing, but uh, you know what? You had I had to learn how to yield to the Holy Spirit. But nevertheless, I was speaking in tongues by the time I hit the floor, and uh, and so I'll forever remember that night and how it happened, and and who was preaching and what she preached on. Amen. It was a defining moment in my life, and uh, has it been a walk in the park since that night? No, it hasn't. Um, but it was a defining moment. And, and if you can think back across your life, amen, I believe everyone even uh, um, could think about things that, that have been defining moments in, in your life, and some for the positive and, and some for the negative. But you know what? We can learn uh, from, those, from those times and those moments, amen, and, and they define who we are as a person. Amen. And, and sometimes uh, we can also see the defining moments in others' lives. And you know what? Uh, sometimes we can learn what to do and we can learn what not to do. Amen. Uh, even by the, the people in our lives. And so today I want to talk about life-changing moments. Let's look at John chapter 3 and verse number 1. The Bible tells us, in verse number 1, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher that come from God. For no man can do these miracles that you do except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus answered and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Lord, I'm thankful for the born-again experience. I'm thankful for the blood of Jesus that was shed at Calvary so many years ago. And Lord, that by faith we can enter into a covenant relationship with you. Lord, that will forever change our lives. Father, I'm thankful today for the grace and the mercy, Lord, that you bestowed upon us, that your word says that your mercy and grace shall endure forever. And Lord, today I'm thankful for the defining moments in our lives, Lord, that we can learn and grow from. And Lord, today I'm asking God that you would help us to recall some things, Lord, and help us that, that would help us to grow and, and to forever move forward. And Lord, in the name of Jesus, I bind every hindrance that might come against the service. And, and Lord, I'm asking you to loose the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, just to, to open our hearts and our minds that we might receive from you whatever it is that you would have us to receive. And in the mighty name of Jesus, we give you honor, we give you praise and glory. And God's people said, Amen and Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. We look this morning at, at Nicodemus as he came to Jesus. And, Amen, this was a, a heart-changing experience 
that Jesus is talking about when he's talking about being born again. And Nicodemus came in the middle of the night to Jesus to speak to him, and, and he said something that, that stuck out to me as I was reading this, and he said, he came by night, and he said, Rabbi, we know that you were a teacher that came from God. And as, I, as he said, we, it, it speaks to me and believe that, that he was representing, amen, others of the Sanhedrin. He wasn't just coming on behalf of himself, but he was also representing others. So, amen, there, it's obvious that they were inquiring or inquisitive about this Jesus. He was a teacher that come from God because he was performing miracles and doing things, amen, that they were not able to do. He was, amen, speaking of love and forgiveness, amen, and performing miracles, healing the sick and opening blinded eyes and causing the lame to walk, amen, even to raise the dead and doing things that they had never seen before, even preaching doctrine, amen, that they had never heard before. Obviously, the religious leaders, amen, by this time, amen, after the 400 years of silence, amen, when Jesus came on the scene, amen, we'll find that corruption had already set root in the church world, amen, of that time and in the temple and among the, the religious leaders and among, amen, those that were uh, set forth in the temple, amen, corruption had already set root and, amen, Jesus was coming forth with a new doctrine. We'll even find that when Jesus entered into the temple, he had taken out a whip, amen, and began to turn over the tables and cast out the money changers and said, this is my father's house and it shall be called a house of prayer. Amen. So even Jesus had to cleanse the temple when he went in. So, amen, Jesus come with a whole new outlook and a whole new teaching and a whole new preaching, so to speak. Amen. And even when Jesus had, amen, sat in the in the house and opened up the scrolls and, and prophesied out of Isaiah and, and talked about how, amen, that I'm anointed to preach the gospel to the poor and sight to the blind. And, amen, talked about this, uh, this prophecy being fulfilled and, amen, Amen. And they had indignation in their heart. Amen. They just couldn't take the fact that Jesus was sent by God. And amen. So Nicodemus comes in the in the midnight hour. Amen. I believe he came in, in the in the nighttime, not the midnight hour, but the nighttime. Amen. Because they didn't want everybody, amen, to realize that the, the priests were having trouble. Amen. But they understood that he had to be a man sent by God. Amen. Because he was able to do, amen, some things that they were weren't able to do, but they were supposed to be the ones that were chosen by God. Amen. But he had something that they didn't have. I believe it's so because one, amen, because when Jesus said, when you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Amen. That I and my Father are one. That's why, amen, because he was anointed, amen, to preach the gospel to the poor and open the eyes of the blind. And he was able, amen, to heal the brokenhearted. It was something the priest couldn't do. Amen. The the priests could read from the scrolls, amen, and they could do all of those things, amen, but they couldn't mend a broken heart. Can I tell you something this morning? You may be watching here, amen, and you may be listening to this preacher, amen, but I can't heal your broken heart, amen. I can't fix your marriage. I can't heal, amen, what's happened to you in the past, but there's one that can, amen, and he died on a cross 2,000 years ago and shed his blood, and he can take what's wrong inside of you he can take what's broken and he can heal that heart he can fix what's wrong he can mend that that's been torn apart he can make the crooked path straight he can do what I can't do I can point him to you but it's you if you'll open up your heart to him today there'll be a heart changing defining moment if you can just say Jesus it's kind of like when Peter amen had stepped out of the boat and he began to sink because he took his eyes off of the Lord when he just said Lord save me and Jesus reached out his hand and picked him I'm talking about when Jesus walked on water in the midst of the storm and said Peter come and Peter stepped out of the boat and began to walk on the water to Jesus but when he began to take his eyes off of Jesus and looked at the waves and the wind and the storm and he began to sink himself it was a defining life changing moment moment. Amen. When Jesus
Jesus reached out his hand and Peter said, Lord, save me. And Jesus picked him back up and together on the water they walked. He'll never in his life forget that moment. Amen. There's a lot of things that Peter went through. Yes, they had a, a, a major catch the day when he said, cast out your nets. That was a defining moment. It was a defining moment when Jesus preached to the multitudes and they fed the 5,000. It was a defining moment when Jesus did all of those things. But I believe Peter remembered that night when he began to sink in the middle of that sea and he said, Lord, save me. And Peter was brought back up and together they walked across the deep back to the boat and Jesus calmed the storm and the winds and the waves. My God, there's sometimes in your life, even when your faith fails you, even when your decisions aren't right, even when it seems like you made a mistake, if you can just cry out to the one, if you can say, Lord, I need you right now. It may be at midnight. It may be in a storm. It may be in a valley. It may be in distress. But if you'll say, God, I need you, he'll reach down and pick together he'll lead you back to safety a defining moment I gotta get back on Nicodemus you see Nicodemus he told he said Lord we know that you're a teacher that comes from God for no man can do these miracles except he be from God And Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily I say unto you, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? He just didn't understand. He needed revelation. You know, a lot of people, I believe there's not very many people on this earth that don't understand this one thought or one phrase that Jesus died on a cross. Whether you believe it happened or not, everybody, it seems, has heard that Jesus died on a cross. Whether you accept it, believe it, reject it, most people have heard Jesus died on a cross. But see, we need more than that. We need a revelation of the cross. We need a revelation that that Lamb of God, that spotless lamb shed his blood amen that our sins could be washed away that if by faith we can join into a covenant relationship with him Deuteronomy 30 and 6 says and the Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your seed to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul that you may live that means there has to be a cutting away Amen. A circumcision of the heart. God has to cut back the flesh. Amen. The flesh has to be dealt with. Amen. I can remember in my life different times. Amen. Even as a Christian. Amen. Where the flesh seemed to just surround me and the flesh would get in the way. Amen. And God would have to come in and just cut away the flesh. Amen. All of your life. Amen. If you're not careful, the flesh. Amen. Can cloud your mind and your heart. Amen. As long long as you're alive, amen, God will have to deal with the flesh when you go to the Old Testament and look in the tabernacle, amen, if you'll begin to study the Old Tabernacle, amen, you'll find that there's a thing called the brazen altar. When you go into the outer courts of the tabernacle, amen, the first thing you'll find, amen, at the gate of the tabernacle is the priest, and the priest will take the sacrifice. You see, the the family, amen, the the husband would bring the, the sacrifice to to the outer court, the gate, amen, and the priest would take the, the lamb or the ram or the bullock and they would take, amen, and the priest would inspect the sacrifice and he would look it over and he would inspect it, amen, to the degree that they were, amen, to make sure that there was no uh, spot or no blemish, amen. Do you understand when the, when the priest would inspect that lamb or ram or bullock or whatever was offered as a sacrifice that the priest would never never look at the individual 
That is a type and shadow of Christ. You see, the priest never would inspect the man that brought it. Let's just say I'm the, I'm the husband of this family and I brought, amen, the, the, the sacrifice and I gave it to the priest. Amen. I'm the husband that brought it or the head of the spiritual head of this family and I brought the ram and I laid it in the hands of the, of the priest and the priest would accept the sacrifice and he would begin the inspection process. Do you know that the eyes of the priest never looked at the man that brought it you understand that when God looks upon Jesus Christ he never looks at you again when you accept Jesus as the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world that God does not look at your sin he does not look at your failure he who died on a cross he never looks at you because Jesus takes upon the sin of this world that we might be the righteousness of God that's why you can come into his presence that's why you can lift holy hands you're not holy you've done. You're not holy because of who you are. You're holy because of what he did at Calvary. Somebody ought to give him a praise and glory because God doesn't look at you. He looks at his son and the blood that was shed. He takes the lamb and he inspects it. And if it is without spotted blemish, then they take it. Amen. After they slit his throat and take that blood and sprinkle it. Do you understand that the flesh that is left is burned? on the brazen altar. And in that Old Testament tabernacle, there's a continuous fire that burned in the brazen altar. I'm just going to use this. And there's, a, and there's a fire continuously burning. For miles around, you can see smoke coming out of that tabernacle as a reminder that there's always a burning of the flesh. We need to always be reminded that the flesh has to be dealt with as a child of God. Amen. The blood has been applied, but the flesh will always have to be burned. Come on, somebody. Amen. We always have to deal with the flesh. Amen. So there's a constant reminder. Amen. That the flesh has to be burned. Psalm 51 and 10 says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and create in me a right Renew a right spirit within me. Amen. And maybe you've been saved. Maybe you've been filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Maybe you've been walking with God, but there may be a time that the flesh causes you to get off course. Amen. I've been there. I've done that. I bought the t-shirt. Amen. But you need to understand what the psalmist said in verse 11. Cast not away me from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Amen. That tells us, amen, that even a man whose heart was after, uh, whose heart was after God. Amen. David. Amen. Understand. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. We need to be careful. Amen. Because the enemy's after your soul. The enemy's after your life. Amen. You may be saved walking with God. Amen. But the enemy will lay a snare. He'll lay a stumbling block. And if you're not careful, the enemy will come in. Amen. And you got to keep that flesh under subjection to the Spirit because Galatians tells us that there's a war. A war going on between the flesh and the spirit and he amen if you'll walk after the spirit you will not obey the lust of the flesh amen so let's keep in mind amen that the enemy wants you to walk in your flesh he wears, he's warring after us amen but those defining moments in our life amen when you do stumble and fall remember if any man sin there's an advocate with the father Jesus Christ and he's ready to forgive he's ready to restore He's ready to pull you back. He's ready to come and pick you up. Amen. Create in me a clean heart, oh God. Renew, renew, restore a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. So those defining moments when you have fallen, when you have stumbled, you can learn from those Learn from those feelings when you feel so isolated, when you feel so defeated, when you say, you can learn from those, Lord, I don't ever want to be there again. 
We can all remember those defining moments in our lives. Amen. What would have been like had we been there when Noah nailed that last board on the ark of safety and those first two animals come walking up from the woods? (laughs) Amen. Took about a hundred years to finish that boat. The mock, the ridicule, the laughter, the doubt at times what it must have, went, must have went through his head. Amen. Never seen a drop of rain in that land. Amen. He didn't have a lot of community support. The Chamber of Commerce didn't come and give him any extra funding. Amen. There wasn't a ribbon cutting like she said. Amen. The news didn't come out and give him an interview saying we support what you're doing. Amen. But the minute the last nail was nailed in, the first two animals come walking up. Couldn't you imagine how his heart must have started racing? This thing's about to get real. And then the next two, and then the next two, and a couple of doves landed on the top just to watch. Amen. Then a couple of mosquitoes landed. I'm just I don't understand that one. <laughs> Well, the enemy had to play his part. Can you imagine the feeling of how real this is about to get when all the animals got on board in the first cloud and the thunder cloud started rolling up? Can you imagine the anticipation, amen, when his family started gathering up with their luggage and their food pack? Come on, somebody. Amen, can you imagine, amen, when they had to start taking care of those animals and feeding them, amen, and and now that the townspeople are starting to talk, amen, all that they had mocked and all that they had ridiculed, amen, they're still talking, we ain't ever seen any rain, but the first time they heard... Can you imagine the chill bumps that must have went down his back? A defining moment. When the first animal comes strolling up, a defining moment. I knew I was right. I knew I heard from God. Not to boast of himself, but the fear of the Lord. The reverence of the power of God when that first cloud started gathering up, he must have pulled his family and said, God's going to keep his promise. Don't fear. we got a job to do. Can you imagine that defining moment when that first drop of rain fell on his shoulder? Now it's time to close it up. Can you imagine the defining moment when the water got so high that the boat began to float for the first time? Motion sickness set in maybe for the first time. Can you imagine how that must have felt? That defining moment. Do you know the defining moment when his family began to grow and the kids began to grow and that first time a grandchild told a story to their kid. I was there when that boat floated for the first time. That was a defining moment. Oh, sorry. I walk a little bit when I preach. There's a defining moment in our lives. To, you see, not everything is like fireworks sometimes that defining moment might have been just one of the kids as they heard grandpa preach for the first time they got convicted and just come down to an altar no fireworks no running the backs of the pews it was just a message one of pastor russell's most powerful messages to me and he may not even remember it but he was preaching about laying your crosses down and one phrase that he made he said this was back at Tuckerman, Arkansas and he said if I could have our spiritual life if God would open our spiritual eyes there would probably be crosses laid down everywhere where we have forsaken our crosses he said that he 
is not worthy. He that laid this cross down or doesn't pick up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He was preaching those scriptures. And he said, if God would open our spiritual eyes, there would probably be crosses laid down all over the church. I remember that message so many years ago. I also remember that one where the lights went out and they blew a trumpet. It about scared me to death. I was just a young Christian. Defining moments. We can remember those defining moments. What if we had been there in Genesis 12 and 1 through 3 when Abram was told, my God, you need to get up and go out of the land of your fathers and go to a land that I tell you. The land of his fathers was full of idolatry and full of witchcraft. And Abram had to just obey God sight unseen go to a land that I tell you he didn't even know where he was going amen but he knew enough about God to listen to him he said and I'll make you a great nation and I'll bless your seed and not only that but I will bless those that bless you and I will curse those that curse you he was blessing us all the way back to Genesis he was blessing us because if we bless Israel he'll bless us But if we curse Israel, he'll curse us. He was making a promise. Even though we weren't there, in essence, if we bless Israel, if we pray for Israel, if we stand with Israel, he'll still bless us even today because God keeps his promises. It was a defining moment, amen, that started in Abraham and it continues even to us today in America. That's why it's important, amen, that we know who we put in office. It's important that we go and that we vote. It's important that we as a country stand with people that stand with Israel, amen, because Abraham was given a promise. It was a defining moment that goes all the way back from generation to generation because we must stand with God's people. Would it have been there to hear Abram Hear from God, you got to get up and leave the land of your father because it's full of idolatry. And you got to go where I tell you. He didn't say, you know, go down 20 miles, take a right by the big oak tree, and you're going to stand there and set up camp. I'm going to bless you. Just, you got to go where I tell you to go. Sight unseen, just trust in God. But when you do, I'll make you a great nation. Defining moment, he could have said, ah. I'm going to wait on confirmation. I don't know about that, God. I've always raised. This is where I was raised. You know how many people say that? This is where I was raised. This is where Mama went to church, Grandma went to church. And sometimes you got to obey God, regardless of what everybody else is doing. I'll make you a great nation. And I'll bless those that bless you and I'll curse those that curse you. What if we'd have been there in Exodus 17 when Amalek fought with Israel and Rephidim and Moses told Joshua, you go out and you fight with Amalek and I'm going to go up on top of a hill and I'm going to take the rod of God in my hand and when I hold up the rod, amen, Israel will prevail. But if the rod falls, amen, then Amalek will prevail and I'm going to take Aaron and her with me. Amen. Sometimes, amen, you may not be the Moses, you may be the Aaron and the her. Amen. But you'll be in the midst of a defining moment because Israel's going to win God's people is going to win and Aaron and her amen they got underneath Pastor Moses and they stayed him up with a rock and they stayed up his hands and as the rod of God was lifted up on top of the hill amen I can just imagine Joshua every time that he got tired and weary in the midst of the battle he could look over his shoulder on top of the hill and he could see pastor with his hands raised up Amen. there was some prayer warriors with him Aaron and hers up there and if his hands get tired there's going to be Aaron lifting his hands up and her is lifting his hands up you see Moses can't do it by himself there's got to be an Aaron and there's got to be a her Pastor Marty can't do it by himself he's got to have an Aaron and he's got to have a her 
together and they're going to hold his hands up. Somebody's got to be in the front line. Somebody's got to have a sword. Somebody's got to have a shield. Somebody's got to have a spear. But somebody's got to be praying and somebody's got to be holding their hands. I wish somebody would preach with me. Amen. Somebody has got to be on the hill. But somebody's got to be on the front line. It takes all of us as the body of Christ because the enemy's going to show up. He's going to come when you're tired and weary. He's not going to come when you're strong. He's going to come when you don't want to fight. He's going to come when you're beat down. He's going to come when you're frustrated. But I'm here to tell you, if Aaron and her will get along beside Pastor, and you'll go up and raise up the rod of God, which represented the power of the Holy Ghost. And if the Holy Ghost is moving, we need to be a church that's full of the power of the Holy Ghost. And if we'll raise up the rod of God, amen, I'm telling you, God's people will have the victory because it was already won at Calvary. And if we'll let our faith rise up, I'm here to tell you, there's nothing that God won't do. Give the whole Lord a hand clap of praise this morning. Defining moment upon that hill. Joshua won that victory. You see, there would be a time later over in Joshua when Moses would be dead and he had to take God's people across the Jordan. But Joshua learned it takes prayer, but it also takes being willing to fight. Amen. It takes us both. Some people are prayer warriors. Some people are worshipers. Some people are workers. Some people hold sheetrock. Some people work the sound. Some people preach. Some people play. It takes us all. Some people are givers. Amen. Some people work the nursery. Some people, some people run the bus when you get one. It takes us all working together for the kingdom of God. Amen. Hallelujah. If you could have been there, amen, in Joshua, amen, when they took the men of war and compassed the city of Jericho, amen, once for six days, and they took seven priests before the ark with seven tri- trumpets of ram's horns and on the seventh day they compassed the city seven times and the people shouted with a great shout and the wall fell down flat could you been there and seen that sight amen I like to preach it like this it wasn't the priest it wasn't the men of war but when the people began to shout amen they were in unity and one mind and one accord amen I can imagine amen fourth day nothing happened the third day nothing happened the fifth day nothing happened I'm sure you got some naysayers in the group. Man, I'm tired of walking. Amen. They told us to get out here and walk. Amen. We've been walking around this city for six days. Ain't nothing happened. There should have been amen, some chips falling off the wall or something. The gates should have started rattling loose. There should have been some brackets falling off. Amen. There should have been some chips coming off the wall. Even the paint's still on the wall. Amen. There's some naysayers always that are not going to see the vision. They ain't hearing from God. They're not praying. Amen. They're going to doubt. They're going to pout, doubt, and do without. Amen. But I'm here to tell you, if you'll listen to God and do it God's way, it won't move until God says it's going to move. And if he says, go seven days, amen, and seven times on the seventh day, and then the people shout, it's going to fall when the people shout. Amen. That might mean, amen, not one speck of dust is going to move until he says. But if we'll do what God God says when it's time to move it'll move amen and on that seventh day on that seventh time the people shout if you could have been there it would have been a defining moment and on that moment that wall fell flat it didn't tip over one way it didn't tip over another way it crumbled my Lord straight down to the ground only God could have done it that way sometimes we just got to simply do it God's way if we do it our way somebody will get hurt if we do it our way somebody might quit if we do it our way it will fall apart part. But if we do it God's way, it'll do it exactly like God said. I'm telling you if we could have seen it that way, amen, it would have been a defining moment. And we're still preaching it. And lives are
you're being changed I'm telling you there's some walls that need to come down walls between racism walls between people that we've not forgiven yet walls around our own heart we're holding God out of working in some areas that need to be touched that need to be ministered to amen we need to tear some walls down but it has to be done God's way I'm trying to hurry that moment in 1 Samuel 17 and 45 when David said to the Philistine you come to me with a sword and a spear and a shield but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts and he said this day will the Lord deliver you into my hands the biggest and the baddest of soldiers couldn't take him down but a little shepherd boy anointed with the power of God said this day this day the Lord will deliver you into my hand the Lord will give you confidence right now the church needs confidence in the midst of this pandemic we need the confidence to live in this time that we're living in. We don't know what holds tomorrow, but we know who holds tomorrow. So face this giant of a pandemic with confidence. This day, the Lord will deliver you into my hands. Devil, the devil ain't got nothing on Jesus Christ. Don't let what's going on in this country cause you to be overtaken in fear. Use wisdom. Use knowledge. Amen. Be smart. But don't be afraid. Let God go before you. Amen. Hallelujah. What about that defining moment when Elijah in 1 Kings 18 and 38 called fire down from heaven before the prophets of Baal? Or in Daniel 6 when Daniel walked out of that lion's den? In Daniel 3 when those three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego walked out of that fiery furnace? What about in Mark chapter 5 when Jesus cast out a legion of demons from a man who was living in the tombs, living amongst the dead, bound with chains and fetters. They couldn't even hold him. He, he's so supernaturally anointed with demonic power that he broke chains and fetters. They tried to bind him. He was living naked among the dead. Jesus comes walking up from the Sea of Galilee and he runs out and falls down and said, Why are you here to torment us? The demons were talking out of him. Jesus cast him out. And when the people that knew he was demon possessed, when they saw him, he was clothed in his right mind, sitting at Jesus' feet. The Bible records him as the worst, the most worst demon possessed man, I believe, in history. Completely free. And you got people today saying, oh, God couldn't save me. You don't find nobody worse off than this man that was demonic possessed with a legion of demons, probably over 2,000 demons, naked, living in the graves. But when they found him, he was clothed in his right mind. A defining, he'll never forget that day. Amen. Today, he's in glory. The Bible don't tell us much about afterwards, but I want to imagine that he never backslid after that. <laughs> Defining moment. I believe that he told the story. This man came up. I was bound. I was naked. I lived, among, I lived out there in the, in, the, in, the, in the tombs, in the catacombs of the dead. And this man walked up named Jesus, and he set me free. He set me free. Defining moment. Mary Magdalene possessed of seven devils. God set her free. She never left Jesus' side. Never left his side. Defining moment. She talked about him for the rest of her days.
John the Baptist. Jesus came to him to be baptized. And he said, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. <laughs> Defining moment. From the time that they cut his head off. Now the old enemy got to John. Even in the prison, he sent word, is he the Christ? Even after he proclaimed the Lamb of God that takes away the sea, that's what the devil will do. You can be preaching the gospel, seeing miracles. Next thing you know, you're doubting. Old John got into prison. He sent, are you the Christ? Are you the one? Jesus sent word back to him in the prison. You just tell them blinded eyes are being opened, the dead's being raised. The old enemy will try to get in your mind. You just remind him what he's been seeing. The dead's being raised, the lame's walking. <laughs> Amen. Even probably one of the greatest prophets that ever lived. Even came to a place where he was doubting when he was in prison. Jesus just had to remind him. Of his own words. Defining moment. The rich man. Rich, rich young ruler. What must I do Jesus to inherit eternal life? Jesus began to quote some of the commandments. A rich young ruler said. Oh, I've kept all of these from my youth up. I've never murdered. I've never stole anything. I've done all. I've kept all of these. Well. Now you need to sell all that you have and give it to the poor and follow me. Rich young ruler walked away sorrowful. Defining moment, that worked out for the negative. Because he wasn't willing to sell all his possessions and give it to the poor and follow Jesus. What profit a man that will gain the whole world and lose his own soul. Defining moment, he kept all the commandments. He was a good guy. He kept all the commandments. I never murdered, never stole. I, I'm a good person. But you lack one thing, Jesus told him. Now you've got to sell all that you got and give it away and follow me. Couldn't do it. Defining moment. Some defining moments are for the positive. Some don't work out so good. I'm closing. Defining moment at the cross. I believe the defining moment was at the moment of the evening sacrifice. It said, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And the Lord could not look upon sin. Darkness covered the face of the earth at the time of the evening sacrifice. I can imagine the feeling that must have had for those that were standing at the foot of the cross. When Mary, the mother of Jesus, watched her son take upon himself the sin of this world, even her own sin. A defining moment. And the last, which to me is one of the better, the day of Pentecost, what it might have been in the upper room when 120 had cloven tongues as a fire that sat upon them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. And Acts 2 and 38 and 39 says to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And this promise is unto you and to your children all that are afar off. As many as the Lord our God shall call. Amen. If you're here and you're saved, you could be baptized in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Amen. We need the power of Pentecost back in the church today. And I believe, amen, and I feel and experience the anointing of the Holy Ghost here this morning. Amen. And I'm glad that there's still a church. Amen. As there's still people, amen, that want the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We need that in our life. We need that in our churches. We need that in our ministry. Amen. And we can still have that same power that fell at Pentecost today. Amen. Defining moments. And you may be here and you may be watching, you may be listening. Wherever you are, you take those moments in your life and you learn from them. You grow from them. 
And whether they be negative or whether they be positive, you allow God to cause you to grow from them and move forward. The enemy will always try to condemn. Romans 8 and 1 says, For there's no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus that walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. Sometimes you just got to dust yourself off. Say, no, devil. Jesus paid for my sins, past, present, and future. And by faith, I'm hanging on to that cross. I may have some good days and I may have some bad days. But I'm hanging on to Jesus Christ. Because he loves me. And he loves you. Amen. And we need to bind together as a people in a church. Amen. Not only this church, but every church around the world. Because there's hurting people. And we're living in a time when Jesus is soon to come. Amen. Jesus is soon to come. And there's people that are dying and going to hell. You know, I believe there's one thing that we can stop. Now, it's unlikely, but we can at least slow it down. And the Bible says that hell enlarges its banks daily. But if we could slow that down by seeing souls saved, because every person that we introduce to Jesus Christ, we stop hell from growing. Amen? For when one sinner repents, re there's rejoicing that takes place in heaven. So if we can stop hell from growing, amen, Jesus has already prepared a place for us in heaven. So if we'll do our job, amen, we can stop hell from growing. Amen? And we can cause, you know, one of the best things is going to heaven, but even better is taking somebody with us. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Thank you, sis. Some good word today, wasn't it? Enjoyed that preaching. Thankful that Brother Jay was um, ready <laughs> in just a few minutes. You know, you're always ready. But um, good word. Thank him. I want to thank him for standing in the gap this morning, making up the hedge. Brother Dwayne and Sister Christy are out of town, and um, Brother Marty was not able to be with us this morning. But we'll be able to all be together tonight, hopefully. Don't forget tonight we're having our fun day in the park at Reynolds Park at 4 o'clock. Um, everyone that's going to come, I've already got most everything. Just bring a cooler of drinks and a dessert if you want. Um, but everything else is supplied. And I think the kids are going to have a little fish and derby. Um, and, uh, you know, it's um, the enemy's really trying to kick us in the teeth with, you know, trying to do something outside of the, outside of the church. But, you know, we're going to do.